to my channel. I'm Louie and I've got my new Luna X2 Enduro. Boy, I've been waiting a long time for a good mountain bike. I started my search early December last year and I ordered another manufacturer's and was delayed past the time they said it was going to be here, so I pulled out. Ended up spending about fifteen hundred bucks more and getting the Luna. And I didn't really want to have, you know, the ludicrous. So I didn't think I needed it because I'm always out there pumping a lot of miles on the trails. There's a really good place right up here um, by my house. It, it, um, Eglin Air Force Base Reserves. They got some uh, nature reserve out there and some really good trails. And, and I'm so happy to get this in here. You just don't understand. <laughs> um, so anyway, I wanted to, just the 600, the, six, the 500 watts, the, uh, the Fame 600 had, and I wanted a good battery. I wanted some like 20 amp hours um, so I could go right in the lot. I didn't think I needed all the ludicrous power or anything like that. But then as, after I ordered it, they Luna made a new video talking about the controller being necessary for their newer batteries of the 52 volts or something like that. And I'm like, well, I'm always after the bigger battery. So I opted for the ludicrous. Okay, so now I got Ludacris, and then I'm going to get the phone amp, and now I'm going to um, get in there and dial in all the specs to where I get it, you know, running efficiently so I can get a lot of range out of it is what I'm trying to do, and to balance out um, how much power I need it for what I'm up against. So uh, I'm not going to be out there full throttling or anything or breaking the speed limits. I'm going to try to ride it around, you know, all over the place, but I was just after, you know, some help getting up the hills and, and exploring. So anyway, here it is. I'm going to open it up. Looks like it came in perfect condition. Right here on the top, it says, do not accidentally discard axle caps, which are tied, zip tied to the axle. Looks like it came in pretty good condition. I'm gonna have a lot of videos on this uh, bike as I maintain it and, and its lifespan. I'm not. Hopefully, I'm not gonna upgrade the suspension and everything. It, it come with uh, Rock Fox, uh, Rock Shocks, and I'm gonna set the sag on those. Um, and uh, make sure that they're maintained and I think they'll work out good if I have any problems with suspension then I think I bought the wrong bike but I, I really wanted the, the rock shocks on here I didn't want to have to upgrade to a bunch of other components afterwards um, I was willing to settle for the less power because I wanted carbon fiber frame um, on the suspension and the tires and wheels and, and the brakes, boy, did I want those brakes for, cal for, disc, um, for piston brakes and stuff. Nice big size ones. Yeah, let's get this puppy open up. I don't know if it comes charged or not. But. Good X slips.
That's what it looks like down in the box. Hey, it looks like somebody's been rolling it around in the dirt. See, it looks pretty cool. So you're going to make me pull this all the way out like this, huh? A lot of boxes, you just uh, open it up on the bottom and pull the whole thing up. The box up over the ingredients. I guess we're going to take everything out from the top. Seems kind of crazy. Or turn it over on its side. Hmm. Watch me wrestle with it, I guess. some weight here. These three zip ties look like pulls this tire up there. Now what? tire there. Let's see if we can get it out without screwing it up. down right here on these fork things or anything like that. Well, I got on the wheelie, it's pretty safe here. Well, it's nice. A couple other things in the box. Yeah, let's see what we got.
Let's try the chair trick. You know, the two boxes came in there. So what says, oh, the battery charger. Definitely want to get this thing charged up. And fix it up. Pedals in here. Might use my old pedals. Kind of like them. I think I got to show you my old bike. Just because uh, it was a temp bike and it was never meant to be a mountain bike. So I bought this Walmart piece of junk bike to get me through. Because back in December I, I totally got hooked on mountain biking. And uh, that's when I placed my first order for a good mountain bike. But in the meantime, I bought a Walmart <laughs> mountain bike and I broke everything on it. Here we got some stuff, some reflectors. Glass got reflectors. Little package of goodies. And the pedals. Oh, these pedals look pretty good. I don't know. Yeah, I think I'll switch the pedals. I, I got ones that dig in better. Um, not that they're not dangerous because they are. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but they grab good. I don't think I need it to grab as good with the power, but I was never counting on the power. I just, just the extra assist. Wanted to kind of mount and bike the same kind of way I normally do. We'll see how that works out now that I got ludicrous. I probably went out the door. Okay, so we'll put all those on. Um, and we'll get these later. Put the box over there. First, got to put the forks on. I mean, the wheel on. That shouldn't be that hard to deal. Yaris? Devin Nair Yaris. Woohoo! Keep this pad down here for now. She got a carpet with just a lot of padding under it. But I want to be careful. Well, I don't see any damage on it yet. Yet. Holding the uh, 
bars in there, which I don't want to tweak on any of that. And then it's got some other type stuff. Myself. Cut myself first. Bike next. Ah. Woo! I'm starting to say, agree that it looks better in person. I can already tell the derailleur is going to need to be adjusted. That's standard on setting up your bike. And also all these spokes, oh, they're quite loose. Yeah, I'm not even going anywhere until I tighten all these. I've got to have a good tension in there because once I go out mountain biking, these will give out first thing if you're not taking. All the spokes are going to be tightened and have good consistent tension on it. And then after 20 minutes of riding, and then I'm going to check them. And then after the next 40 minutes of riding, after so that's 20 minutes there to each ride. So the first ride after 20 minutes, check the spokes. Don't go back out there until you know they're all tight. And then next time, 40 minutes, keep checking them on a regular basis. You know, after you get them all the tensile strength of the moss settled in. And then you can really take it out and, and trash it. But at the same time, while you're working it in, you've got to keep checking all the other bolts and stuff, make sure they're tight as you're adjusting it and getting used to it. But you don't want to make the mistakes of running it without tightening them up. Like that right now, those are kind of loose. Especially if you're going to go out and do the stuff I intend to do. Stuff that a guy my age shouldn't be doing. These handlebars are going to go right in there. So let's just put them on there right quick. take care of this puppy. Right. I don't know. I'm 
not sure about that metal flake. I don't really care how that looks. That doesn't do anything for me. It just been black or red. It didn't matter. Even blue. No, it didn't matter. <clears throat> Suspension components mattered. Okay. This isn't on right, that's for sure. I have to take this off and turn it, turn it around. Looks like it's facing the wrong direction. Something like that. Move it backwards. All right, let's just undo that, apparently. Right here in the middle. Let's get it in there temporarily. Wheel on this sucker and stand it up. I am liking what I'm seeing here. It looks really nice quality. Still expensive. I don't care who you are. Temporary handlebars. Okay. Front axle. Unscrew that sucker. <laughs>
One of these days I'll pony up. I don't think I'll ever buy a stand. I was able to get my old bike. All my bikes work. Fixed running. Alright, so there's some stuff in here maybe. Where know that is. Spacer. Aluminum spacer right there. So I just stuck it right in there. Grips like that. Sure about this. good but you screw it in but I don't know how you tighten it up. It should be like a lever or something. I have to look that up on the internet. Basically <coughs> went on the website there and it, it has an Allen bolt hole. See it? Pretty simple. So, see if we can get that front wheel on without breaking anything. I tell you one thing about it, I can tell already. So it, it's light. I can maneuver it relatively safely.
I guess it goes in from the left. And you got this brake thing here for the brake pads. <clears throat> now this is to keep them from getting a compressed inwards. And uh, I usually use move it back and forth a little bit before I take it out to spread the pads a little bit more extra so it's easier to get the wheel on. I mean that's what I've always done with motorcycles. This is actually the first bike I've had that has a disc brake on it for a regular bicycle. I want to make sure I line that up in there good without scratching anything. Oh, I'm already pretty close. There's a lot of room. I can see I can see right down in the brake between the brake pads and the rotor. The trick is spreading the forks a little bit. Yeah, I got plenty of gap when I spread. <coughs> Spread open the, uh, the disc pads with the uh, with the insert they give you. Pop right in there. All right. So I guess you just take a wrench for that. That's it. Tighten it up. Well, I want to show you tightening it up, so I guess I'll just flip it around. in there. Try to get the handlebars on right. All this will need to be adjusted. But I am not taking it off road until I tighten up those spokes good. The way it came right like this, you, you would have to take it to a professional if you didn't know how to treat, tighten spokes yourself before you even rode it. Really seriously, before you even rode it. Especially if you're going to do something. I mean, it would make it for the street, but not for its intended use. It's just, they're just not worn in. They're just not tight. After they wear it, wear in, then it'll be good. But breaking them in. So I guess you just turn that in there. Come on, baby. Show me how it works. Pretty secure. That's it, huh? Wow. Put a little bit of torque on it, right? Not too much. So there's a spacer here, that, but the one that you're concerned about is the one over here on the disc side. And make sure that's in there. All right. Well, yeah, I can't wait. Okay, I've been so curious to see what, how it fits. So let's uh, climb over it. This is a medium. Right, in, it looks like it, the stand, standover is not too bad. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's pretty high stand over. Right there, I'm getting crunched. Don't have to be that tight. It's going in the opposite direction of the torque. Still got to hook up some wires here and hook this little display. Set these handlebars a little better. Get the seat tilted somewhat better than that. It's kind of funky. You got some seat instructions in the box there. I'll that, get that out and check it out. It's really not that much heavier than my attempt bike, seriously. Feels like maybe 20 pounds, 15 pounds heavier than this. The other one 35, this one weighs 55. Still, man, I could slap that thing in the back of my van easy enough. Yay! Anyway, I'm making sure. to the right angle for me. These uh, top bolts are a special star design for the brakes. So it made me a little special tool to hold the, the drill bit with a star that fits in there. Otherwise, I was going to strip it out with regular Allen, but yeah, be careful about that. But you don't tighten these all the way back up really tight. You don't need to, as long as they don't slide around. Preferably that you should be able to just to move them up and down with a little bit of straight, and you never have to um, tighten them up again. You know, they should be a little flexible in case you crash. They will twist rather than break. And then you can just adjust them. As long as, as, long as you can, you know, Well, the brakes feel really good, actually, now that they're on there. And on the seat right here, it raises up here, right here with a, another little post. I don't know how high it goes. But I need, I need it up a little bit from, from the bottom. So that takes an Allen wrench right there. And then on the, on the seat right down here, there's another Allen wrench, a bigger one. Yeah, it, that, that you can twist it to give you the right angle and move it back and forth a little bit. I put it in the middle position for now, but I tilted it down because it was way up in my crotch like that. So it's down and I feel like I got about even pressure on it. I'll have to dial it all in. Right, right now I need to get it up high enough so I feel like I have the right inseam to down pedal. I'm sure glad it's not freaking super heavy. Like a rock star or anything. I mean I could move it around pretty easily. Oops, that comes off pretty easy.
Now I did take it for a little cruise outside. I turned it on right, right away. Accidentally I turned it on and I couldn't help myself but take it for a cruise. I'll tell you all about that in a minute. I want to get the seat set right. easy to do. some kind of system going on. I'm trying to check and make sure I can get auto up where I need it. So what, a couple, an inch and a half? Push it down. I haven't had one of those before. This is all new to me. All I know is I like to set it up where your leg is at the right inseam down here. So when I come up with this, I should have that's pretty close. Right there. Oh, we'll go with that for now. And make minor adjustments later if I need it. Yeah, that doesn't quite go. Hope this seat is comfortable. I don't want to crank every, anything too hard on the carbon fiber. It freaks me out because you can crack it still. There. Yeah, this was popping straight up in the air. I 
like that. So I turn this down too. I turn these down. Um, this thing's going to be upside down once in a while. I'm going to bring a couple of rags so I can put them over here because working on it upside down. I've always had to do that on my bikes. All right. So anyway. So that's the seat all the way down. That's not too bad. And I'm standing over it pretty good. It's a medium. I could get up here with it. The seat down, it's not bad at all for standing clearance. Feels really good. There's a power button. So that would be like off right there. So let's, let's turn it on and see, see how she does. Oh, by the way, all the other um, bolts on the controls to adjust them are standard Allen. It's just that one on the brakes are special star ones. So you're going to need that tool for sure. See, everything's a little bit loose so they can bend around. I prefer it to move rather than break because I, when I crash it all the time, probably. Close up look at it. That's that star thing I'm talking about. I don't know if you can see it really that good. He's right here. I tell you right now, it's got a lot of pressure in those springs. A lot of pressure in there. It must be a, come with a lot of air in it or something. I'm gonna have to set the sag right, but it seems stiff to me. But they look buff too, though. Look at that. Big old buff things. Set this in the neutral. Here I think you take it off and there's an air thing in there. The Yari shocks. Front forks. So they're stiff right now. This, I'm not sure how to work this yet. It seems like it goes all the way around and and then you got this thing goes here. And I have to learn all about that. But that's the deluxe. There's that beautiful motor. It's got a, luter, a ludicrous controller. I'm not sure how you access that yet. But. The derailleur and all that works fine. I went out and test rode it and went through all the gears and shifted it into the highest one to the lowest one. And it was wonderful. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I hear some clunking when I'm shifting. I don't know if it has shift detect is working or you adjust that, but I imagine there's a bunch of programmability that I could uh, do and I'll do it probably. But I was able to... Brakes worked great, felt pretty good, didn't lock up. Just for a little test drive, I gave it outside. But I'll tell you, I have to dial all the suspension in, and I'm looking forward to it. So that's going to be like a trial and error. First, I'll find out how much air pressure I got in here and set everything in neutral on the dampening. I think there's some adjustments on the bottom of the forks as well, very right up under them. This thing.
that turns, so that does something. Find the neutral spot on it. Definitely good. Love it, man. Okay, so let's uh, turn it on. You press this button right here. It turns the power on. But uh, it was, the key was hanging right here, and it's still hanging right there, and I didn't do anything with them. It didn't turn it either way. So I suppose it, it came on, and you can take the key out with it on, and then you can come back later and turn it off and take the key with you. Power it on. Hold this button here. And the thing comes on. Now the first thing I did, now over here you can adjust the levels. These controls, right? So you can see the level thing here. And I put it on zero and I drove it around. Felt like a regular bike. Didn't have much drag, so that's always good to know. I don't know if it, you can pedal it with no power at all, but on zero, it did it. it says it's got about 35% on the charge. So, so I did three and, a, three, three and a quarter miles, three and a half miles there. But I just, you can adjust it by holding, I guess, down a couple of these at the same time. So I'm pushing down both of those and then the screen changed over here see so then I could scroll to setting and I guess you push the enter button yeah you do the unit I don't know what the unit is oh yeah probably the kilometers or miles per hour or metric and barrier. Okay. Hit that button to escape. Brightness, power view. What is that? Current. Power or current. See how many watts you're using. That's cool. So I'll just keep it on power right now. AI sensitivity. Okay, that's a one you could. So at three sensitivity, on my test riding around around the um, block, it was pretty good. I like I like the uh, the torque sensing. I guess that's what it is. It felt pretty good right there. But apparently you can go up, down. I wonder how high it goes. Five. Yeah, I liked it. It was pretty manageable on that one so we'll keep that now what can you go down further trip reset vibration service assist mode so i went in here and i you have a choice you could go five assist modes or nine assist modes but in my test wasn't when i went to one to five five had all the power in the world and one and two were pretty good um, here I didn't see it when it has nine assist modes. I think nine is equal to five. That's what I'm saying here. But you have more uh, increments. So we'll keep there. So I'm not sure how the ludicrous works. So there it goes back. All right, here you can see the speed limit. Okay, so what I did was I went. Um, okay, go back. So I went to information this time instead of setting, and I went in there. Now I got wheel size. Whoa, I guess you can't change that. It, and, all right, who cares? Speed limit as I was able to do 30 easy enough. What's the speed limit? Oh, you can't set it. What's up with that? Maybe I don't have it in Ludicrous. See, I don't know how Ludicrous works. Controller information. Should tell you a hardware version of something, shouldn't it? I don't know. Torque information. What does that say? Hard There's a hardware version right there of something.
error code back. So, do I have ludicrous? How do I know? Some kind of hardware version, whatever that is. Speed limit. No setting on that, huh? I thought that if you make the speed limit go up, that would give you ludicrous. Hmm, not sure. I'll have to get on the website and learn all about that. I'll let you know what I learned. So we just get out of here. Does not do that. Hit the buttons all the way down to get the back. Exit. Okay, get on the website and learn. All right, don't forget to sub subscribe, and I'm going to give you some more of these videos, all taking care of it, truing the, the rims and uh, maintaining it, and giving the feedback of how all this stuff is working and how to dial in Ludacris, and then I'm going to get the app going and dial that and maybe I need the app to now to find out how ludicrous is working so it might be what I'm doing right now all right glad to talk to you see you next time on the left side there's this little flap I don't know if you can see it. That's where the charger goes into. So let's charge her up.